Hiya, welcome to Tallulah Lagash. We are starting off in my bedroom for this wild vlog and Tallulah's Dream Palace video because I wanted to show you that cupboard, this particular fitted wardrobe in my bedroom and more specifically the top section up there which does have double doors but is a very small um, storage space I would say that it's only slightly bigger than maybe one of those cat carriers or cat holders which people often use to take their pet cats to see the vet. You wouldn't be able to fit a human in there much older than say a toddler and you would be prosecuted for child cruelty or child abuse if you did try to store um, a toddler in such a small space. You're probably wondering why I am talking so much about my wardrobe. Well that's because it is a very important feature of the dream that I'm going to be discussing with you on this wild vlog. So we're going for a nature walk live action, out in public, raw, unscripted, unedited. I say it at the start of every wild vlog. Soon I will just trust that you understand what this format is. This is a Tallulah's Dream Palace video because I am right in the middle of a dream incubation experiment, a Star Wars um, adventure, version two. That's what I've opted to call it on my blog. Viva Lagash linked in the description box below. So for reasons of um, consistency, we'll keep the same title when we refer to the dream incubation experiment in these videos. As you can see, it's just about to reach dusk or it is actually dusk, which is one of my favorite times of the day. It is actually only around about 4.15 in the afternoon. So dusk is falling very early at the moment but we are in December, specifically Christmas Eve, the 24th of December. And I think it's a Tuesday, although I'm never quite sure what day of the week it is when I'm not working. Now, the dream that I'm going to be talking to you about happened last night when I went to sleep. I had been up all night working and only went to sleep in the very early hours of the morning in fact, probably around about 4am. I then woke up at around about 9.30am. So this dream took place within the space of around about five hours. And it's kind of ironic because prior to going to bed, I had made a wild vlog where I talked about how easy the success of having a Star Wars themed dream had come to me during the duration of this current dream incubation experiment and how I felt that I'd almost stacked the odds in favour of having Star Wars themed dreams. That was really the topic of um, that particular vlog because I wanted to just come and have a bit of a chat. Given I'd had uh, one, two, three Star Wars themed dreams right at the very start of a dream incubation experiment which is quite unprecedented for me so I have probably prejudiced myself to some extent because last night's dream or this morning's dream was in fact not Star Wars themed or related whatsoever or at least on the surface it isn't the one thing that often surprises me is when I delve into my day residue or things which may have influenced my dream from my waking reality I can often make links between material which wouldn't have been obvious to me um, without you know just putting together the jigsaw puzzle or kind of detangling the um, the web so to speak I don't know where I'm going with that analogy
Anyway, I'm going to be doing the same as I've been doing in my other wild vlog, Tallulah's Dream Palace videos, where I discuss what happens in the dream and also then annotate and interject with my discussion, my analysis, my interpretation. I've actually just started doing the same on my blog. So my blog posts have been influenced by the video format to a certain extent. You'll remember from my other wild vlogs, which I have filmed um, during this particular dream incubation experiment that I wasn't aware of what number of dream I was on in my sequential numbering system or what title I'd allocated to the dream. That's because I was making the videos so quickly after the dream took place. It was actually before I'd had a chance to update my blog. I am in the process of updating my blog now. I will probably finish updating my blog before I upload these videos. So actually the order in which I record the content on whichever medium I'm choosing doesn't make much difference because I'll probably always sort out blog posts before YouTube videos. Anyway, I am just walking down a path right now. That's the lake to my left. There's quite a lot of people around because it's, uh, you know, I was going to say evening, but it's still late afternoon, I guess. So for the pauses, I smoke while I'm out because it's the perfect opportunity since I only smoke outside. I don't smoke in my actual house. So whenever I'm outside, I'm probably smoking <laughs> um, and going for a smoke. So anyway, this particular dream, I still won't have allocated a title to it or know where it comes in my numbering system. I do know that I'm in the 1040s at the moment on my online dream journal um, on Viva Lagash, linked in the description box below to keep reiterating that point because I really do want you to go and check it out. This particular dream though was really peculiar and really bizarre, really odd, weird and enjoyable because I found it amusing. There isn't much detail to it. What I've noticed about my recent dreams are that I have very, very brief dream recall. So there's a lot of gaps missing and the dreams seem to be very short in duration in terms of when I recall them, what content I actually do remember. This is in stark contrast to some of the other dreams that I've experienced at various points in my life where there's a very complex and detailed um, narrative running throughout them. Now I'm going to take you to the place now that I have a flash or I've decided to use a flash um, so it's visible you can see where you're going but I've decided to take you to the place where the Night Stalker incident happened. The Night Stalker incident, you may recall from an earlier wild vlog, was an incident which happened while I was out walking, as I am now, at night. And I came into these woods here to be preyed upon by some random men who decided to follow me. And the reason why I actually blogged or vlogged about that incident was because it very strongly influenced a subsequent dream that I had. Isn't the sky a beautiful colour? You can see the orange, the blue, the lilac colours. And we're going into the forest now. So this is where the Night Stalker incident took place. They were down on the roadside where you can see those orange flashing lights. That's where the roadside is. And I was through this 
wooded area here between the trees. Okay, so let's get into the dream narrative because I feel like I've just been rambling on and not really got to any specific point that I was hoping to make in this video. I'm just distracted by the beautiful dusk and the peace and quiet of the woods. Although we may stumble across some dog walkers or even some golfers because the golf course is just there. I don't think you can see anything. Anyway, I'll try and keep to the angle where you can see some sky because I think that's going to be the most aesthetic thing I can show you. Okay, let me just put my bag down because quite frankly, I don't want to have to hold it if I'm going to be standing in one spot anyway. Okay, so, oh, one second. And there we go, that is the nature of um, filming in public because you, you basically run into members of the public and you're not always prepared for it and you probably look a little bit odd filming not much and talking by yourself into a camera phone um okay so let's get into the dream at long last so i showed you that cupboard that was in my bedroom that very very small top part of my wardrobe in my dream somehow james charles the makeup artist and social media influencer had become a squatter so he'd become a trespasser who'd then sort of unlawfully taken possession of the top part of my wardrobe and that was where he was living and I was trying to seek an eviction order or eviction notice for him because as soon as I discovered that he'd managed to break into my home somehow without me becoming aware um, I thought to myself, okay, we need to get rid of him. That is the first thing. I was very, very anxious about the fact that he was squatting in the wardrobe in my bedroom. I know where this part of the dream comes from because I teach law at a university. Do excuse me while I just use my lighter and pause for a moment. I'm having trouble because I'm outside. I'm just going to put you down onto the ground for just a second. You can probably still hear my voice. I hope you can anyway. Hopefully some of you will sympathize if you're an outside smoker and you have a lighter which is also partially running out of gas. It can be really annoying to just be standing there flicking a lighter and not quite managing to get it to work. Okay, so I had been teaching a class, Legal Methods. It's based around understanding how to read statutes. Um, comprehend how the common law works reasoning interpretation um, stare decisis the rules of precedent all of those types of things and one of the cases that my class had to read was a case of trespass some homeless people had trespassed into a building after the local authority had failed to offer them temporary accommodation and the local authority was seeking an eviction notice or an eviction order from the courts. That is clearly 
what influenced that particular part of my dream. Also, I had watched a video of James Charles on YouTube where he asks the most popular questions that people have asked about him on Google. So James Charles was there as part of the day residue as well. Okay, so I'm trying to seek an eviction notice. The dream scene then changes and I'm somewhere which I can't really recognise from real life. It was just an interior which seemed to be a very basic interior of a house and I assume that it was the kitchen area because there was a large table and I think I also saw a sink in this room but I am assuming what type of room I was in because it wasn't particularly clear or at least I didn't recall uh, what I saw in that room. There are various members of my family present. I can't recall exactly who, but I know that my mum was there. That's often the case in my dreams, that there'll be various family members. I'm aware that there's dream characters that represent members of my family, but typically it's only really my mum my nan, sometimes my stepdad, and sometimes various of my female cousins that stand out in my mind as being solid, concrete characters that were actually present in the room. I've told my mum that I've subpoenaed James Charles. Now, subpoenaed would be the wrong word. I would have served an eviction notice on him or potentially called the police for trespass. I don't know what I specifically did in the dream, but using the word subpoena, which is not even a word that we use in the English legal system, typically anyway, or at least it's not a commonly used word. Um, it just wouldn't have captured what I was trying to tell her. I believe that the reference to a subpoena is based on the Prince Andrew scandal involving Jeffrey Epstein. There was some indication that he could be subpoenaed as a witness if he entered the US. Now, Prince Andrew is the brother of Prince Charles, James Charles. I could be making too much of a tenuous link there. I'm not entirely sure. But I had seen reference to Jeffrey Epstein on social media in a meme on the day that I had this dream. My mum is then berating me, telling me that I've been unsympathetic and insensitive to the needs of James Charles and I should have been more aware of his plight and being more willing and keen to help him out by presumably letting him stay in the top part of my wardrobe. Now I know where this part of the dream comes from as well. If you watched yesterday's wild vlogs, which will be uploaded on the channel just before this video, I mentioned that I was going Christmas food shopping in the supermarket and how much I wasn't looking forward to that experience. I did in fact go Christmas food shopping and while I was on the bus on the way home there was a older lady who had a European accent and she was talking to a couple of other you know older people, a presumably husband and wife couple. It was one of those random conversations that just start up between strangers and I was listening to it because I had nothing better to do and I didn't have enough phone battery to bother listening to my Audible books. So I paid attention to their conversation and it was about homeless people and the single lady was saying that she does give charity to homeless people but often they just want the money not food and she then has concerns as to what they want to spend money on and she doesn't know who is a legitimate recipient of her charity so she either spreads it out across homelessness charities or will 
somehow try to make sure that the money goes to a third party for the benefit of homeless people because she just simply doesn't trust their motives in, um, you know, what they want their money for. Now, I don't believe that that's anybody's business. And when I was listening to her conversation with these people, I actually disagreed with it because if you want to help homeless people, you want to help homeless people. And I get the fact that you don't want to encourage them to uh, misuse alcohol or drugs. But if a homeless person is there asking for money or I decide to give money to them and they wanted to say buy tobacco with it, I wouldn't have a problem with that because I understand what it's like to be addicted to smoking. I'm also somebody that smokes, um, I'm not sure if you can see that, but yeah, I also do like a bit of 420 myself. And if I was homeless, my coping mechanisms would no doubt be the same or even more important to me as the ones that I have in my non-homeless lifestyle, which I'm very privileged to have. If I have a smoking addiction right now, no doubt I would have a smoking addiction as a homeless person. And whatever comforts a person or provides them with um, something positive and something that they feel they need, I don't want to be a gatekeeper of how they spend money that people donate to them. I do get the point that you may want to give the money to somebody that you believe is more deserving and worthy and that you can't change your moral stance on that. But I just felt that she was um, kind of blowing her own trumpet of altruism and also at the same time being very morally righteous about it. Also, uh, actually, as I say this now, which helps that I make these videos because my mind kind of thinks in a stream of consciousness way and I managed to tap into ideas a lot easier than maybe if I'm sitting writing them, where I'm also constantly editing myself in the writing process. But as I'm here talking to you right now, I've just realised that my um, friend Iva, who that's his anonymised name, by the way, but Iva, who's just completed his PhD, had completed a PhD on altruism, so altruistic behaviours. So that may have also tapped into this idea of being sympathetic and empathetic to other people's needs and to go out of your way to do something which doesn't benefit yourself but has um, a huge positive reward for another person. Um, so yeah, my mum was not happy about my attitude towards James Charles and she felt that I was being very uncharitable and very unkind and very ungenerous. And that is basically it. That's all I remember about this particular dream. I told you it wasn't a very long dream and there wasn't very much detail recalled. It may have had more detail in the dream as I experienced it, but as I've said, sometimes I um, lack those fillers, the parts of the dream narrative which would explain the gaps in my recall. So it may have been a longer, more complex dream. This is what I woke up remembering about it. Hope you've enjoyed this dream. Please do let me know. Give me some uh, feedback in the comments section. Please make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload new content onto this channel. Check out the description box below for my social media, but also my blog Viva Lagash, which I strongly encourage you to go and check out. Give my video a thumbs up if you like it and share it with anybody that you think would be interested, entertained, amused or whatever. You can ask me anything. It could be about dream work, if you want any kind of assistance, help, guidance or whatnot. Or it could be something to do with me and my personal life. Just ask away. Um, and yeah. That's about it. Thank you so much for joining me on this wild vlog to Lula's Dream Palace video. And I'll see you on the next one, which will no doubt be tomorrow if I wake up remembering another dream because I am trying to make contemporaneous videos where I discuss my dreams in the way that I've been doing. And I have very much enjoyed doing so and I hope you're enjoying listening in. See you on the next video. Bye.